Well, greetings and salutations, everyone. I hope everyone is doing well today. Today, I have an absolutely just amazing subscriber interview to share with you. Uh, one of the most known cases when it comes to Dogman is the Michigan Dogman and the Beast of Bray Road. Uh, some of you may be like, LBL, LBL, but for the mainstream, the people who are not like us, those two stick out the most. Bray Road, Michigan Dogman. Obviously, there are other experiences that are more horrific and such, but today I have a subscriber interview who actually encountered the Beast of Bray Road. Before we get into it, a couple links. As many of you know, I rely on Patreon, PayPal, channel membership, and the merch to help the channel to continue to grow and go. Links to Patreon, PayPal, and channel membership is in the description below. Merch displayed directly under the video. Also, Dogman Frightening Encounters, Volume 1 through 3, the audiobook versions. They were written and researched by Tom Lyons, narrated and produced by me, Jeff Nadolny. Those audiobooks are available on Audible, Amazon, and iTunes, links to which are also in the description as well. And finally, last but definitely not least, if you'd really like to help support the channel to continue to grow and go, simply subscribe. It does not cost a cent. Click the like button. takes half a second. If you don't want to miss out on any of the informative uploads I put out daily, click that bell icon and folks, please leave a comment. Why? Well, because all these things really do help the channel to continue to grow and go. Yes, folks, they definitely do matter. Now, everyone, I have taken far too much of your time. Let's jump in to today's upload, shall we? All right, everybody, today I have a subscriber who contacted me just recently. I found his encounter on Reddit. And it happened out in Elkhorn. Um, it's a brief encounter, but it's definitely a terrifying one. Nate, how are you today? Doing good, Jeff. How you doing, bud? I'm doing well. Thank you for taking some time out of your day to come on and share um, what's been going on with you out there. So I'm going to hand the floor over to you. Um, I know you've been going out there for a while taking samples and stuff. Um if you don't mind, could you start kind of like right when you very first started feeling weird out there? Yeah, yeah, I can uh, rewind the clock there. Um, it's When this all started out, this was probably about probably a year and a half to two years ago when I first started going out there to take samples. Um, it was a, um, it's basically water quality sampling to ensure that the site, it's an old quarry, isn't leaking anything hazardous into the local watershed. Pretty mundane routine, routine stuff, nothing special about that, nothing that disturbs anything. It's just as simple as dipping a, a container into a pond and calling it a day. Nothing special. Um, on top of that, then, uh, I didn't actually know the property was located by Bray Road or Elkhorn when it happened. Um, I was just given a pin saying, hey, go to this, you know, this site. This is what it's called. And that was the end of that. So. I started doing that. Um, and at that time, I kind of didn't assume that dogman was really, I don't want to say it wasn't real, but I didn't think it could happen to me. I figured it'd be more in the northern part of the state or in state parks where there's more um, wooded lands, not uh, not as not, uh, deforested as where they're at. Right. Um, so about, I'd say, a year and a half ago, two years, I, I had a detour for some construction off 43. And uh, it took me an exit or two early, so I got off. GPS told me to turn onto this road and turn onto it, and I look at the name of the road, and it's Bray Road. And that's kind of when it clicked. <laughs> wow, yeah. I had a uh, what-the-hell moment, and I'm just like, you got to be kidding me. Um, so that's the beginning of it in regards to my recollection. So it took me about a year to figure that out. Prior to I even realized that, 
I was extremely nervous going into those woods and I couldn't give you a reason why. Right. Um, you know, listening to other people's encounters, they talk about the lack of sound, the lack of just a heavy feeling of presence in these woods. Um, the areas where I sampled that, you know, half of the time it was bright, cheerful. You'd hear the birds, you'd hear frogs, you'd hear, even see some deer out in the fields and you'd see cranes, geese, all sorts of things, just kind of doing their own thing. And um, the way the property is set up, it's, it's a private entryway and it's gated off. So no one can actually go in there without a key or permission. Um, and luckily we did have that because we were, you know, we're doing the job up there. So um, going into that site, I was always used to seeing stuff. Um, but once you hit the tree line, it was the back part of the property. Um, once you hit that tree line, it just, everything stopped. It just went silent and just dead almost every time. Hmm. And uh, we were up there four times a year. So we do a quarter sample. So it would be, you know, sometime in the winter, sometime in the uh, late spring, height of summer. And then uh, we have to go back probably in early fall this year for another resample. So that's the gist of the sampling and just the environment. Now, really quick, when you said you're used to seeing things when you go out there, what sort of things like just animals or? Yeah, I haven't seen anything except uh, not counting this last sighting. That's strange. Okay. Just your normal deer, geese. Uh, saw a coyote one time as well. Like the area is thick with wildlife, and people saying otherwise just haven't gone out enough to you know look around. Right. Okay. Um, but to paint a, paint a better picture of how this property is set up, I should probably do that for the viewers because um, they're just hearing me talk about this stuff and not getting an idea. So the private driveway is basically right off the main road that you enter the site. Just a public road; you can take it any time. I'm going to keep that just kind of private, just for the sake of anonymity's sake. Yep. Um, but once you turn off this road, you go through a gate, you got about a quarter mile to a mile and a half, um, to you hit the old cord, which is on your left. And then prior to that, you have a farm field, probably for the a little ways past the road. And then that turns into the old edge of the quarry slash, um, you know, unused fields and wetlands where they used to have old drainage ponds. Um, and this quarry has been shut down from what I could gather through my research since 2008. Um, so it's been reclaimed pretty fast by the uh, environment. Now, off to your right side as you're driving down this road is just a depressed lowland type of area. Um, I'm not sure if it was ever developed. Aerial photos from what I looked at and researched, I couldn't tell you. But it does look like at one time or another it was a farm field of some sort, or maybe they mined it out for some sand or something like that. But this area is just a clean, pristine field. And then you start getting back into some, I'd say, maybe tiny little foothills, probably like maybe 50 feet the tallest, nothing special. That's where that tree line starts. And they have an old paved service road that kind of runs to that tree line. And that's what we have to take to uh, go to the actual edge of the, our property. Um, so once you hit that tree line, that is the... Uh, that's the end of the road. And you have to get out and you have to walk about another 100, 150 feet to get to the retention pond. Um, and then another part of our job is when we do service, if the water is actually leaving the property, we then have to use a device. It's a, um, it's called a flow reader. Nothing special about it. It just tells you how much, how many gallons are leaving per second. Then you can do some math to multiply how much water you are dumping into the ecosystem. Hmm. Um, it's just a glorified fan on a swivel, and then you just it gives you a reading of point two gallons or something like that. <laughs> Nothing special. Um, but after that point, you have to go out to some outfall pipes, which are on the opposite side of the pond. So that's about another hundred feet. Now you got two ways to get to there. You could either walk around to the uh, further east down that old service road that breaks off into a dirt trail, and then trudge through the weeds to get there. Or you can go back and there's an actual, I think one of the other property owners made a four wheel path at one point and they cleared it off where it's actually passable. So we tend to take that out. So we then circle around the property. Um, 
So that's the gist of where we tend to do our sampling. Um, and that's the area where we did here at the sound. So now the actual quarry itself is located a little further down. So I don't want to say down, but it's, it's lower elevations. Basically, instead of following the service route all the way down, I would veer off to my left. And that goes straight into the quarry. And that used to be an old sand quarry. They have all sorts of stockpiles of asphalt, sand, gravel, um, and other material as well. Okay. So that's where the siding occurred. So that's kind of me, like my best way of verbally describing it. Um, pictures uh, are, are worth a thousand words. I did provide them on a uh, Reddit post, so yeah. hopefully that what can I'll help you guys. I'll, I'll put a link to that Reddit post, but what I'll also do is in my community section on the channel, I'll um, put them up there too. And I'll use that one picture um, with the height. Uh, with that red line for the the base of this video, if that's okay with you. That is perfectly fine with oh, me. All right, all right. So now I can get into actual the kind of the first part of our encounter. Okay. So um, obviously at that point I was aware of the um, strangeness of the property I've had. I'd say probably a year before the encounter I had, it was, I want to say it was fall, 20... It was right before COVID, so it was fall 2020. My coworker, for whatever reason, couldn't make it up that day, so I was going solo. And um, I was a little paranoid that day, because as soon as I got out of the vehicle into that tree line, I just dead silence, nothing. On top of that, I didn't see any sort of animals or wildlife in the, in the actual field, so it just felt eerie the entire time that I was going. It felt like I was being watched. So at that point... I didn't hear anything, didn't see anything strange, but um, <laughs> I kind of was paranoid and just grabbed uh, one of our pickaxes and just kind of walked around the woods with the pickaxe and the uh, a giant flow reader and a rifle case. It almost looks like a rifle case pretty much, that I, how I have to carry it. So I'm <laughs> walking around the woods in that. And yeah, that was that was the last time I went up alone because I almost ate uh, the sampling location for it is on a old concrete dam, which I, again, there's pictures for that as well. It's not exactly the most stable thing. So my idiot, you know, my uh, foolishness was uh, almost impaling myself on a pickaxe that day because of my paranoia right. and just the eeriness of the, of the surroundings. Now, how did you, <clears throat> like, what did you feel like the, like you were being watched or what was it like the eeriness? Was? <sighs> it was just the lack of any sound, okay. the lack of any animal life and just the heaviness. Like I, I really did feel paranoid. Right. Um, and then, of course, I had to go to the quarry that day as well. They were doing, um, long story short, we were, we were, were finishing up part of the property, my uh, company is, and we're trying to get rid of some extra product there. So they were, um, they were just, you know, developing it into extra uses. So we have to do a quality control check on that. I was helping a coworker out that day. I had to go up there anyway. So I just told him I'd grab the samples for him. So after the fun in the woods, I walked back drove back down to the quarry and then this is a uh, that's where I, it just was still eerie i was just grabbing samples off the stockpile pretty much in the exact same spot my sighting occurred and i can't tell you if i heard anything but all i can tell you is that in that 30 minutes i was just grabbing samples out of the stockpile i kept looking over my shoulder at that same exact spot where i saw the creature about a year and a half later and it, it was the weirdest thing. It just, I kept being drawn to that area. I don't know why I can't explain it, but that was kind of the gist of it. And, and that's kind of what made this, I kept being drawn back to that spot. Right. Um, so then the actual encounter, you know, fast forward to, you know, late June this year, 25th, my coworker and I are going up there, we're grabbing some samples. You know, we weren't even sure if we were going to get any because of the lack of rain, but we still had to check because of the quarter was in. So we go up there, we pull into the spot. So everything seems fine. You know, none of us were really too worried about anything. We were just excited to have a weekend off. So my coworker got out first, and he heard this sound first. I caught a glimpse of it before he shut the door. Mm -hmm. I still had the vehicle running at the time. I was 
throwing on my safety equipment before I got out. I step out, and he had maybe gone 10 feet ahead of me. And he kind of stopped and looked back at me. And he's, he's like, are you hearing this? And I told him, I'm like, yeah, you're, you're messing with me, man. You're, you're effing with me. And he's, he's like, no, I'm not. And, of course, I was hearing it, but I didn't realize it. Well, I did realize it. I, just, I was too dumb to kind of shut up and actually listen and try to get a better idea of what it was. So hold on one second. Sorry about that. No problem. But once I uh, can you describe the sound a little bit, like (laughs) yeah, I can describe it. So it sounded like almost like a low growl slash slash scream. So it's almost like I'm thinking, you know, like when you stub your toe almost, and you kind of do that, and you just kind of. like that but it was much louder and it was about that tone so i could do i can replicate it to a certain extent right but i cannot do the volume like my coworker said this thing was going when he got out of the car and i followed him about 15 20 seconds away and the fact of it was that loud that audible and we couldn't see anything making the sound so you're talking there's at least 100 plus feet of foliage between us Hmm. and whatever the sound was so it's carrying through all that to us clear as day and it, it didn't sound aggressive per se it just sounded like it was trying to trying to maybe warn something or just make an announcement that hey we were there um like i said i don't know 100 you know i in my mindset of the creature maybe they were up there looking for food at that time maybe they were going to get a drink of water and saw us pull up and had an oh shit moment there's people here i don't know but that was the sound. My coworker um, was much braver than I. He wanted to go investigate it. And I told him he was crazy and we're not doing that. Don't be stupid. Right. <clears throat> so we go look at the pond real fast, which is right off to our left. Thankfully, there was not enough water to sample. So we just said, screw it, got back in the truck, backed out of there as fast as we could. And we had to grab more samples because we were, again, we were producing the material that needed to be sampled so we go back down the road turn back go into the quarry and we start sampling you know all the while we're sitting there trying to talk to ourselves we're trying to figure out what the hell that thing was well i thought maybe it was a cow in the woods no sign of cows in those woods and i don't think a cow could get back in those woods right wild pig no wild pigs up there to my knowledge domesticated pig that escaped unlikely it's just too rugged of a terrain for them to get back into those woods. It's too thick. Um, <clears throat> bears don't make that sound. You know, person, my coworker said hello after the sound ended. Never heard anything. Never heard any rustling or branch, uh, branches breaking either. So mm-hmm. I don't think there's a person back there either. So we're, we're down back at the stockpile grabbing samples. Next thing you know, I start hearing these crows go off in that spot that I took pictures of. They were basically nested a little ways back in the woods that lead up to it. And I heard them going off, going crazy. And I'm like, what the hell's going on? with them?" So I look back once or twice, didn't see anything. Then they really started going off. That's when I kind of stopped. I had finished sampling. So I just kind of stopped and looked back up in the woods and just watched them fly off in a panic. And I'm scanning this tree line and stuff like that right around the area. And that's kind of when I noticed that shape initially. And I have a, huh. And I kind of go by it. And then it clicks in my head. And I go back and it's not there. At that point, I turned to my coworker and I said, did you have and see that? And he responds, no. <clears throat> <laughs> so <laughs> at that point, you know, I'm kind of at a loss for words and I am trying to logically figure out a way of what the hell I just saw because now there's pretty much a shape missing from the tree line. Yeah. And, um, let me get a drink of water here real fast and I can describe it. Better. Yeah. I apologize. Take your time. No problem. No. So, 
So when I saw the shape, and I'm going to really stress, I didn't see many details. I could see its general outline, its color, and a rough size estimate. That's what I saw for roughly five seconds. This thing was big. At the time, I wasn't sure, but it was a brownish gray color, almost like I don't want to say it was a timber wolf color, but, you know, at a glance, I could maybe say, yeah, that's probably what it was. And the very top part of it had two points coming out, almost like ears. So at that point, I'm thinking, okay, it's either three things here, four things technically. Some dude with a bear, a bear hat on in dark clothing, a black bear, um, possible Sasquatch, or a dogman. And I'm trying to lean for the logical part. I even went so far as to say maybe because it happened so fast, I saw a hawk swooping down to grab something. And maybe that's why the crows were going off. Um, so at that point, we were both legitimately creeped out, terrified. My coworker runs to get the car, or the ice machine, I apologize, the work truck. We pretty much get into the work truck, get on out of there, go on about our day. And at that point, we spent the next, took us about three and a half more hours for the workday. We spent the entire time in the car just going through sounds on YouTube, trying to figure out what the hell it was. <laughs> Nothing matched. The closest that we could match was a pig, a wild pig. But the thing is, those wild pigs, they fluctuate on tone. This thing was flat monotone hmm. and deep. So <clears throat> that was what we had. So... You know, we had to go back up anyway next week to redo samples because we produce more anyway, so we needed another 20. So uh, we headed back over there, and uh, we were we were convinced we were just convinced like, okay, if we did see something, we just need to do take some photos. If it's bigger than me, we can rule out you know probably a lot of things. Right. And um. I personally needed that because I had been losing my mind for a week. I made the Reddit post, hopefully, hoping that someone can maybe say, hey, they make that sound. You probably heard one. Or, no, it's probably a logical end. Never got that answer on Reddit. Yeah. It, um, everyone was very helpful. I appreciate it. It was just, you know, didn't kind of, it, it kind of just pushed me more to go back and make sure we, redo, we, we do a thorough follow-through. So, <clears throat> we go back. And... This time we're ready. We're not going to be idiotic and just kind of have a shouting match between the two of us over a sound trying to figure out who the hell's messing with who. <laughs> and uh, we have our phones rolling, windows down, very quiet, and we just kind of crawl a truck along, go back right to the uh, to the retention pond where we're going to stand. Didn't hear a single sound. Hmm. So after that, Actually, let me rewind that. I did. I got a little ahead of myself there. We actually went and sampled the stockpile first because we were afraid to go back to the retention pod. Okay. Thankfully, that day the site was active in regards to we had heavy equipment on site in use. So basically, the days we normally go up, there's no heavy equipment up there usually, usually not in use unless they haul some stuff up to produce it. Um, so this is actually a rare occurrence. Um, so all the animals at that point were kind of they were back in the woods, not really by the the quarry at that time, because we had two dozers going or two loaders going around, moving stuff around, and had a uh, pr production plan going. So we get down there, sample the site. I make my way over, put my coworker in the spot where I approximately saw the creature, and I go up there. And to my best recollection, I uh, stood in the place where I saw the creature by that tree. Now the caveat on this is that that hill is an old asphalt pile, at least part of it is. As I was climbing up that cliff, there were several asphalt chunks I had to climb up on, and there's actually a lip up there about, I'd say, maybe a half a foot, foot and a half that lips up. And then you kind of, it flattens out into that, just a broad plateau up there. Um, I should have a picture of that. It might just be the plateau. I might not have got the actual um, lip of the uh cliff up there just because it was a pretty steep drop and it's unstable so right. I don't want to risk getting too close but when I was up there I did look for signs but of course it had rained the week previously so you know, any signs of tracks were gone yep. didn't look like there's any reg regular path 
but from what I could extrapolate, if anything were to come from there, it came from basically due east and from those woods along that cliff line to look at us. <laughs> and that whole area right there had a great view of pretty much the road, the farm fields, the actual unplowed fields, and um, and basically the entire quarry itself. And I can tell you for sure, I know deer use that quarry. I know um, coyotes are in there as well. Geese, goose, all sorts of things can use that place and actively go through there. So I'm almost wondering if that might have been a spot where this thing might hang out sometimes at night watching for prey. Easy prey, yeah. yeah. Exactly. With That's... water. I mean, there's accessible water there. I mean, regardless. Um, how, how close is Bray Road from this spot, like estimate mileage or whatever? Uh, I can tell you for a mileage sake, I'd probably say two to three miles. I could be a little off if you probably push it up to five. Right. But the way it works is if you look at Bray Road and look, I believe it's to the east. I don't have Google Maps open on me exactly. But you basically look at that and then look at like 43 and look for a stack of trees. Mm -hmm. There are no stacks of trees until you get to that property. Okay. So pretty much the entire area around there is just farm fields. And then this property has the stream, the water, and the undisturbed land. Right. This place has been undisturbed for at least 20 years. Yeah, that was my next question is how long <clears throat> has this place not been in use? Yeah. Or, but like I, mean, I said, like where Bird <clears throat> Road is, it doesn't, there, it's a creature of this caliber is not going to follow the road. They're just going to go through the fields and you know make its way easily to this place so it's pretty close i mean it's nothing that there you know there's not a great distance away um from there no it's easily accessible also the town's only a few miles away so you know and we're too, i'm doing hypotheticals here i can't speak for the creature or if it you know right. if it was what i think it was right you know but if you're looking at it from a, let's look at it from an animal perspective here Easy access to food if you go up to the to the north. You got Elkhorn. Yep. Get some dumpsters. You can get some residential areas, some pets. You got plenty of farms around the area that have livestock and animals. Then you got easy access to a clear waterway that leads, you know, off to the east that is actually heavily vegetated to at least the golf course, you know, for miles. Yeah. And all this area again is, I mean, the rarity of us being up there. I can tell you for for a fact that out of the two and a half, three years I've been doing this, that I think we've produced there maybe five times out of the year. Hmm. So the odds of there being machinery and people up there, slim to none. Yeah. And then the other half of the property is another is owned by someone else. So they obviously do store stuff up there. I can't speak for how often they're up there, but again, this is not developed stuff either. Right. They're, very, they're rarely up there either. So this, whatever's back there, has pretty much free reign. Right. And I don't believe there's any hunting up there. At least up in this property. I believe it's all private. I don't think anyone hunts there. If it is, it's maybe one or two people who want it. So you're not getting a lot of hunters either. So this place is pretty much dead most of the year. So it's an easy place for something to hide. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. absolutely. And there's plenty of food. Absolutely yeah. plenty of food. So that was the photo recreation of it. You know, and I did my little, I don't want to really call it an investigation, but I did my look around to make sure I wasn't crazy and there wasn't anything just looking at me straight in the face. And like I told my coworker, I'm like, this is just, you could look at the whole quarry up here. And I'm like, this explains why the hell I always look at that spot because I always got up there and I always looked there. I don't know why, but it was crazy. It was just absolutely, it just kind of all came together at that point. Like, okay, I understand why that spot's so good. You can see everything. Right, yeah, perfect vantage point, yeah. Yeah, it makes me nervous, too, thinking of all the times, because when you're sampling off that stockpile, you have to have your back to that, that cliffside. So <laughs> when your ass is literally out to the wind right there, it literally is. It's a, it's a kind of a humbling moment for me. It's just coming to grips with that. Um, there's something definitely bigger, because in the recreation photos, I stood in place... Of where I saw the creature. Right. 
And my coworker, again, I put him right where he's supposed to go, where I thought I was at, where I looked, and it was roughly a thousand, you know, seven hundred and fifty to a thousand feet away. You know, what I mean, and again, that's why I'm going to say I can't claim to know exactly what it was because details were not exactly pristine. I saw a shape, right, and that was it, and then some color. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, um, and that's the thing that I like when me and you first talked. You made it clear. You said, "I hope someone in a week or two says, hey, there's a bear out there,' you know, because that'll at least take the the reality of these things existing out there." You know, um, yeah. in the picture, that picture I'm using in this video, you're not a small guy. Um, where that red line is, you're, you're, you're six, four. So it's, you know, that, that line is what, about two feet taller than you, I'd say. Yeah. Roughly speaking. And, you know, someone on the Reddit community was kind enough to at least, you know, do some extrapolated math. And I am by no means a math whiz, but you know, they put it at, you know, seven to nine feet and like i said i think it's more seven to eight and a half feet if yeah. you're you know being generous but this thing was just when i looked at the pictures because i wanted to try to at least ease my mind if i looked like smaller than me in the picture i could at least say okay it's it, 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 it was an animal because i even went onto all fours and got a picture that way as well just to rule out bear and this thing absolutely dwarfs me and it is just it's unnerving and nerve wracking to me because out of all the times I've been up there and felt like I've been watched four times a year for, you know, two and a half three years, you know, you're talking almost a dozen times I've had to go up there with my ass into the wind trying to, you know, get samples and just be oblivious to the environment. Yeah. Absolutely. That's the, and if there's something that big up there walking around and just can watch us like that, not be seen, not be heard. And he said, if it wasn't for the crows, I never would have saw it. Right. The crows are what gave it away. And that that yeah. that that uh, crows, birds. I've heard a lot of people like share that crows will give it. Crows have given these things away before because you know they're just creeped out. It's a per- yeah, and they're they're yeah. loud. Um, you know, and you're like when you were sharing just a few minutes ago, like seconds ago, actually. Prior to you having a, a, a work buddy to go with, you you would go by yourself sometimes. So I mean, how much just screw your head up even more? Yeah, it's it's been one of those moments where you're just kind of thinking to yourself, well, I've almost been dog chow possibly several times and not realize it. I felt silly the one time grabbing the pickaxe just because I was so unnerved. But you know, at the end of the day, I think I did the right call at that point. I mean, I'm not sure what a pickaxe would do to something that big. Just probably piss it off. But yeah, I you know. Hopefully, if it got that close, I'm aiming for the head. We'll just we'll see. But at least probably... you have some sort of you know <laughs> some sort of protection with you. Yeah. Right? Let me reiterate. I don't want to fight these things. I'm not an idiot. I don't. I just want to be. I want to leave things alone. Yeah. That's all. I, I that was my first thing I said when I heard the sound. Let's leave it the hell alone. If it's saying telling us to get away, just let's back on out of here. Yeah. And. Um, if these things are as smart as people say they are, I'm almost wondering if they have an inkling of when we show up. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not saying they could have a, you know, predetermined date. They'll know we'll be there. But maybe if they hear the truck, see the truck, they might recognize it, realize, hey, those idiots are going over here. Let's uh, let's go over the other way. Right. And maybe we just caught them napping the one day. Yeah, I don't know. True. Yeah. I mean, or they just wanted to, it just wanted to check you out, you know? Yeah. I mean, they're. Like you said, where it was, it's a perfect vantage point. Perfect. You can see everything. Yeah. Maybe and, with as fa- and with as fast as it disappeared, like I said, I glanced, I kept going. And then I had the, again, both my coworker and I that day were a little slow in the head just with <laughs> just the shock of everything. Right. You know, <laughs> I don't want to say we're not bright guys, but, you know, we, we, we kind of really messed up it from an investigative standpoint because we had our phones in our pockets when the sound started going off neither one wanted to record when i saw the thing i didn't even think to keep my eye on it i just kind of kept glancing and then it just kind of hit me there and um but the way that thing just disappeared right that's the only reason why i could believe it's a true biped or at least used to being on two legs because a bear i don't think can then splay itself up and then go back down really fast right there's like there's got to be some sort of it takes a second, you know. There's... Yeah, and I mean, I've heard reports of Sasquatch going onto their bellies and these things crawling on their bellies too. And I don't know if that's what it did, because, like I said, it had that lip there, 
and the grass. So if it would have gone to its stomach, it might have at least hit itself well enough to crawl back farther to get out of our sight. Right. Um, Because maybe it it had that same thing of, oh, shit, this guy just saw me. And then ducked down. I don't know. Right. Um, (laughs) But (laughs) that's what the recreation photos are for. Again, I don't have a picture of this thing. I can't, you know... I definitely don't have a recording of the sound it made, um, but we definitely had an encounter of some sort that is still rattling both of us. And my coworker is what gave me so much crap for it too. You know, he, I don't want to say it was bad about it, but like, you know, he, he would just kind of scoff at the idea and say, that's not real. And, you know, you know, I, I can't blame him. How can you tell him that there's a seven foot, eight foot tall werewolf walking around the woods of Wisconsin? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, but in that whole same sense, I mean, you've got the, you know, the history of of Elkhorn Bay Road, and then you're there having this very, you know, quick, yeah, it's... quick encounter, you know, and that's that when I when I read it, and then I talked to you, and we talked just briefly before doing this interview, just I could tell like. 100 percent that this is the real deal just the way you talk you know and you know just how how uh you're not you're not saying hey this was definitely a dog man it could have been this it could have been this. you're more or less saying i wish it was something else than yeah than what I, the I, hell it was because i've got to go back out there in a couple <laughs> of months yeah well not even a couple of months they're still producing stuff now they just started again so i have to go back up there they're trying to they're trying to sell the property thank god but right. <laughs> that means i gotta go up more and more to get more samples unfortunately so um but you know in regards to that it's like I, with the history up there it's like yeah that's one thing but you know from a scientific perspective which is you know what my job and a lot of my educational background is based out of i mean i have an environmental studies minor or a sociology major so it's like i i you know I, I've, I've studied the sciences yeah. for a good chunk of my career evolutionarily there makes no sense to be an upright canine yeah no. but you know at the same time the fossil record is a fragmentary representation of everything you know we only see x amount percent of it you know maybe one percent of what was really around yeah. so there very well could be proof that we just haven't discovered yet or it could be hidden from us who knows I don't really get bothered by that stuff. I just, it is what it is. If it comes out, it comes out. If it doesn't, nothing we can do about it, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Wow. But, I mean, and I appreciate you coming on. Um, I appreciate you reaching out to me as well. Um, and, you know, this is, <laughs> I don't know. I'm kind of blown away just because I've got, you've got the history there. And, you know, I'm actually looking, when I'm looking at these pictures, and like I said, guys, I'm going to put the link to the Reddit post. I will put them in my community thing. But the pictures of his mock investigation, they're creepy. You, You just can almost, looking at these pictures, just feel like something is there because it's just so desolate and creepy. Well, there is there is one more thing to that. When we did go back and we had our cameras rolling, and like I said, I want to discount this because I think I can explain it away. Right. But when we were by that creek, or not creek, the retention pond, we were walking back and we heard a rock clack, like two rocks hitting each other. We had an oh-shit moment there, and, of course, we had to photograph everything for the investigation, so we took the long way around to get to those pipes, the picture of those pipes. Yeah. Well, as we walk to those pipes, I think my coworker does have it on video. We just have about, I haven't bothered to uh, upload those videos yet. Um, they're on our work phone, so it's a little more of a process to get them to our personal phones to use. But um, we actually saw a deer running off the hillside there, that thick, that thicket I showed you guys in there. Yep. Um, that's where I believe when we did the, do the sighting, that's where I think that creature would have at one point found a way up there. And that hill leads to the plateau that I was on, that cliffside. And that's where we saw the head sighting. That's where the recreation photos are. So if it had to see us, it would have had to go up that way. Hmm. So, um, but we heard those rock clacks. And I can't tell you what it was in regards to 
you know, is it one of those things or something else? Right. I think it might have been a deer hitting a rock because we did see a doe. We did scare a doe out of the brush, and it jumped in front of us. So maybe it was on that hill to hit a rock or something. Right. Because there was only one I heard, and then of course my coworker has three minutes of me smacking a rock in front of them, trying to get a response back. I was like an idiot <laughs> doing it. But, so that's the only reason why I'm kind of discounting that. Is I think it was probably the deer. Yeah. But yeah. It just kind of adds to the eeriness there. But of course, the day we go back for the recreation, it's like I said, the machines are going. So the deer was back in the woods away from everything and everything was bright and cheery in the woods for the first time. And I can't tell you how long. So, right. Uh, I, I'm actually, I really enjoy this because I, you're, you're not really debunking. You're not trying to debunk it, but what you're you're scientifically trying to figure out what the hell happened. And I really, I really think that is the, one of the coolest parts of having this interview with you. Because, you know, first of all, you're like I said before, you're not saying, "Hey, this 100% was a dog man." Yes, there's history of people saying they've seen something out there, but you know, you're saying, "I really hope it wasn't." I'm gonna try my damnedest. To kind of try to debunk this, you know, and I think yeah. that's a cool that adds a cool part to this because, you know, it shows that you're really serious about this, like hoping to God that it was the deer, it was just a freak bear out there, you know, a random bear in this small section of woods surrounded by farm fields, you know. Yeah, um, I mean. It, 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 nothing else fits to me you know if you look at the pieces and how they're going here and the history like you said the pieces start to line up thinking okay there is obviously something else here and the yeah. fact that you have a skeptic in my co-worker <clears throat> who up until that point hearing the sound you know was you know just kind of wrote it off and now he kind of will he is now saying yeah there's definitely something up there now yeah. We're, we're trying to figure out our next move and that's you know whether do we get a game camera do we put a game camera up there and see what we can catch um i personally think these things are too smart to be caught on camera but yeah, I, that's just my 10 cents on it but who knows maybe we'll catch them laughing yeah yeah maybe they'll put a game cam like i don't know but the whole thing is maybe have someone stand on that vantage point ballsy enough and put a game cam kind of where you guys were looking up or maybe have one looking down or both, you know, um, I don't know, but you've got to definitely really be ballsy because one of you are going to have to go by yourself up there and stay back down there. And I don't know, just, yeah. just the yeah. pictures, like I said, just the pictures guys are just eerie. It's, it's just an eerie sight, you know, like you can just tell something, something's not right about the area and it might just be just because it's so desolate, but who knows? <laughs> I mean, it's a good, like I said, it's by Elkhorn, but really the only other major town is Lake Geneva, which is 30 miles, you know, 30 minutes away by car. Then you have Milwaukee, another, in the middle of nowhere. It's perfect country for these things. Right, right. Yeah. But, On top of, yeah. like I said, woods being surrounded by farmland. And I, I mean, it could be a bear, but. That's it's kind of a weird scenario to have a bunch of farmland and fields and then just a section of woods where one bear or two bear are hanging out. That's I don't know. <sighs> that I hate to say it like that. that to you, but <laughs> Yeah, that's exactly like I said, I'm at peace of that I had the quote unquote ideal encounter with a dog man, I guess. Yeah. Because I was far a hell away from it and I was closer to the truck than it could get to me. So if it ran at me. I was just going in the truck and we we're going to call it a day yeah. <laughs> at that point. Um, Absolutely. But you know, that's kind of our mentality at that point. And then, you know, we got enough heavy equipment on our, on us, on us that uh, next time we're up there, we're not going to run unarmed to say the least. We'll have some stuff, but again, we're not going to try to do anything stupid. If it yeah. hears something or looks, see something, we're just going the opposite way. <laughs> we're going to just treat it like a bear and try to get out of there in one piece. Yeah. Yeah. Just treat it like it's a, it's a predator and get the hell out, get to the and truck and it, go. One thing I can say is your coworker now is a little more, um, keened in on it instead of being such a skeptic, which could have, which, you know, let's say you, something does happen and, He's kind of more skeptical. Now he's kind of where you are, and now you'll both get to the truck just as quick. 
you know, we're, we're both on line. Like I said, I think he had a realization because I explained to him and I'm like, okay, you wanting to go further into those woods where that sound was at was probably the stupidest thing you could have done in any horror movie. Yeah. Uh, and he's like, well, it stopped when you got out of the car. And I'm like, doesn't mean anything. Doesn't mean anything. You know, I'm like, well, it might have been scary to you. And I'm like, it wasn't scared of me. From those <laughs> pictures, that was not scared of me. I'm not going to be your bodyguard. And I'm not, and you're just going to be puppy child if you go out there. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, plus, you know, there was a private property, trusp- uh, no trespassing sign, thankfully, like three trees away. So we saw that, and I'm like, oh, well, unfortunately, you can't go any further. And, you know, at, at that point, the creep vibe really got to him, and we kind of turned back and booked it out of there and all that fun stuff, and then did up the sampling at the quarry where we thought we'd be safe. Right. Yeah. And you know, it's not a human either, because I'm sure that if it was another human, like you said, no trespassing, people are going to get in trouble for going there. Um, but if someone was coming up on that area, you'd most certainly hear a vehicle approaching. Well, there's one way in. Yeah. There's one way in. It's all swamp and marshland on the other side of this property. So basically, the further east you go, it hits that stream that runs through everything. Hmm. That's where our retention pond drains into. There is nothing past there. And then, you know, you go, it's marsh, and then there's more farm fields. There's nothing. There, I mean, outside, maybe there's a guy back there with us, a secret lab that we don't know about, like a drug lab or something. Right, but right. again, we're talking about a dude who's at least seven feet, much bigger than I am. And he's wearing solid color trench coat stuff or, you know, like a timber wolf colored, you know, cut off fur thing yeah. with pointy ears on his head. I, I don't, you know, like I said, I don't want to call them pointy ears because I just look, I saw two triangle looking shapes on what would have been the head. And the head was, I, I don't want to say it was it's hard to, like I said, I don't want to be giving wrong information if my brain's trying to put, you know, what I think I saw into perspective. Like if I think I really saw a dog and I'm going to be thinking of that, you know what I mean? Yeah. But from what I, my memory recollects that the head was a decent sized head. Like it, you know, you saw the shoulders and then you saw the head, unless this thing had like a mane on its neck. I, I don't know. It just looked, it looked, it just was big. It was freaking big. And it, it just, it was something else. I just, like I said, I'm very thankful that if it was that, it gave me the distance so I didn't piss myself in yeah. fear. Um, and I frankly am terrified because there's, there's a lot of things out there I don't know about. You know, I, I'm afraid to go back sometimes. And it's just, I'm going to be having my wits about me. And I just kind of, it's just kind of all hit me now that I'm talking to you. Jeff, and I'm just having a no shit moment here. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, I really, I, I feel that because, you know, now it's just, you know, I can't, I can't imagine being in your, in your shoes and knowing that you have to go back. Um, I, the only thing I can say is be, be careful, be observant, and, um, geez, I don't know, just be careful, you know. And I think, yeah. I, I mean, we kind of kind of i'm gonna say joked about the game cam thing because i I mean i i think you're putting yourself in danger if you do do something like that to be honest Um, well if we do do it did it if we blow sorry yeah no if we do do it i would say we would probably do it where i see a lot of the deer coming out of like they the deer actually use that service road as well right they'll come up the service road and then you see all their trails go branching off it so if anything, I just put it there just to see, just for the hell of it. And again, that's kind of a, a property line for us anyway. So I, I can't put it in those woods anyway. It's not technically our property. Right. After the pond. Um, wow. Yeah. So it's just, it's just one of those things where it's like, you know, I think we got a little close to uh, a little closer than we wanted to do to something we probably don't want to see. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And knowing um, now, knowing, just hearing you talk about the, you know, it sounds like there's an, more than enough food in that area for an apex predator, whatever it is, you know. Um, Jesus, I, that's scary. I mean, I, I really, mean, whew. Unless someone knows of an escaped grizzly bear or like a freakishly large black bear, that's the only other thing. But like I said, I don't think a bear can move that fast and drop down and just disappear like that. Right. right. I, I, I've, I've, I've never seen a bear drop. Not be noticed. Drop. Not be yeah. noticed in that there's area. no... Yeah, and there's no bear trails that I saw in the woods when we did our, our walk back there. And like I said, it's 
unless there's something back there that we can't see. But again, we only go so far before it becomes private property and another parcel of, uh, of the property is divided to something else. And I don't know who that is. So we can only go so far into it. Right. Hmm. Um, but if you guys have any questions regarding like the location, the layout, I can gladly go on to uh, Google Maps and get an aerial view from you guys at least. Yeah, um, if but, you don't mind, would you, um, I'm going to, what I'll do is I'll put this up. I'm going to put it up tomorrow. So, um, to, you know, people are hearing it today, um, but it'll be up uh, Sunday. So if you could send me a, an, an email me or text me a aerial view of it so we can kind of, I'll put that in the, in the section, my comment section as well, so people can kind of get a feel of the area. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to reiterate this is private property. Please don't trespass. Don't yep. go on there if you know where it's at. I'm going to do my best to keep it as anonymous as possible, but for the posterity of trying to describe everything, which I think I blushed up explaining the first couple parts of that, just because of how, I don't want to say complex the property is, but just just the processes and all that stuff, I didn't do as well of a job as I wanted to. Well, yeah, um, I mean, guys, yeah, like he said, it's private property, and, you know, it's if you do know where it is, don't go out there, and if you do, it's on you. It's not on Nate, and you know, just be respectful. And I, I'm, my my crowd are usually really great anyway, so I don't think anybody's just gonna go randomly cruising around. I think they're more or less gonna want to look at the pictures and get the feel from that. So awesome. Well, thank you so much, Jeff. I appreciate everything, man. Hey, um, it's been awesome having you on. Do me a favor. Don't hang up when we end the interview. I'll talk to you for a few more minutes after. Um, is there anything that you'd like to say before we end the interview to, to everybody? I would just say keep an open mind to whatever's out there and never assume you know everything and just treat you know stuff that you're not sure of with the respect that you give yourself. That's what we did, and I, I think that's kind of why you've been allowed to do what we do up there is we're not doing stupid stuff. Right. Um, these, these things are intelligent. They're dangerous. They are something completely alien to us that we don't have an understanding for. Oh, um, some yeah. sound words right there. I appreciate it. All right, brother. Well, thank you. And uh, please, if you, if you do have any other incidences, keep me in the loop, will you? I will, bud. All right. Thanks, man. No problem. Well, there you have it, folks. Today's upload. I hope you all enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed sharing it with you. And I'd like to thank you all for supporting the channel. It is, after all, your support that keeps the channel growing and going. And what gives people like yourselves a chance and a place to share their experiences and theories judgment-free? Just simply treat it with the respect that we all deserve. Thank you. Please stay safe, happy, healthy, and ever vigilant. Keeping an eye on our children, pets, family, and friends. These creatures are real. They are out there and they are dangerous. Share this information with the people you love and care about, and it may just help save their lives someday. Till next time, never stop asking questions, never stop searching for the truth, and God bless.